Welcome to the July 29th, 2019 Zoning Board of Appeals meeting of the Town of Raymond. The Zoning Board of Appeals will come to order. The board does have a quorum this evening. And I'm now going to do a roll call, and I'll start on my left. Patricia Beaton. Joanne Stinson. Lynch Cirelli. Louise Lester. Thank you. This is a public proceeding, and unless the board specifically votes to go into executive session, you have the right to hear everything that is being said and to look at all of the exhibits that are present, uh, presented. Please notify the chair if you aren't able to see or hear. The board works from a published agenda and will be considering tonight's items in the following order. order. We did the call to order. Um, new business, which is a public hearing. The applicants, Todd Roma and Jessica Dobson. Map 13, lot 29 slash 000, zone uh, rural residential at 141 Raymond Hill Road. The reason is a conditional use. And then three would be the signing of findings of fact from the Volpe application and the David Garish Break Exhaust Center applications that we did at our last meeting. Four would be code enforcement officer communications and then hopefully adjournment. Um, in each instance, the burden is upon the applicant to demonstrate compliance with the provisions of the applicable ordinances or state law. After the board votes on the merits of each application, it will prepare a written notice of decision. Because the notice of decision may substantially affect any appeals rights and also as a matter of courtesy, the board asks that those attending the meeting with regards to a specific application not leave until the board has completed its discussion. Generally speaking, appeals from adverse decisions must be filed with the Superior Court as otherwise provided by law within 45 days of this board's decision. Also, to be certain that you preserve your individual right to file any such appeal, you must be certain that the board's record evidences your appearance this evening in opposition and on the basis for your opposition. All persons speaking, including representatives of the applicant and members of the public, are asked to stand at the microphone, to sign the speaker sheet, state their name, address, and affiliation with the application, which would be for, opposed, or neutral. All persons speaking shall address all remarks or questions to the chair. The meeting is not over until the board has formally adjourned. Any discussions not included on the meeting agenda or accepted by the board is to be held until after adjournment or conducted outside of the meeting room. With that, we can get underway. Len Sorelli, did you wanna? Yes, I, after I got the six page um, objection to the Roma <coughs> Dobson project, um, it has many, many references to the uh, Town of Raymond oh. comprehensive plan, here it is. And uh, <coughs> we, got the, we got the objections late and it's, it's hard to get through everything that, that's in here, but in studying this plan, which was drafted in 2004, um, I found that Louise was on the committee that drafted this. And it is my strong opinion that uh, because of this relationship, I believe Louise should abstain from the vote on this property and I, <clears throat> I feel very strongly about it. I had to disclose things and um, I go to the town attorney to, to get his opinion. So uh, in my view, it's not necessary to abstain. Um, it's up to the, it's up to um, Louise if she'd like to or not. And then the board can vote on whether it's a conflict or not. Um, disclosure is important. So that's the important part. Disclose in the record that why you may or may not have some sort of undue influence or bias or predisposition if or involvement or knowledge of the applicant, anything like that. But if you, as a board member, still feel like you can participate without bias or predisposition, then you state, then you shall so state and the board can vote on whether they agree or disagree with you. That's the proper procedure. Louise? Um, first of all, it was in 2004. And granted, I was only a member of the committee. I wasn't instrumental in any of the decisions other than my own interpretation or result from. Um, I also think that um, it, it does need disclosure. I think I can be unbiased in a decision that we do. The other thing that crossed my mind is that I should not be on this board at all because if in fact this is upheld, then 
I can't make a decision on anything that we do here because it all is related to the comprehensive plan. Meaning if, if you had to abstain due to being involved with the creation of the yeah. comprehensive plan. Then I shouldn't plan. be sitting on this board at all. Okay. So you feel that you can um, be involved in this application without any concerns, any prejudices, anything? No, I think I can be totally unbiased. Is there a motion from anyone? I make a motion to take a vote. Okay. What's the motion? To allow Louise to vote on this or not. To participate? To participate and vote. Okay. Um, all those in favor? All those opposed? Okay. We're good then. Thank you. Thanks, you guys, for bringing that forward. Okay, then we will start in with new business. Um, this is the application of Todd Roma and Jessica Dobson that I referred to, referred to earlier. It's a conditional use. Um, and it's regarding the Roma farm and holding events, um, which I'll let them speak to. I will first say that a site walk was conducted on June 15th, 2019. Len was uh, present, I was present, Scott was present. We were, um, and I believe Louise drove by at a later date. I have driven by. I was not at that particular time because I was out of town. But yep. Yeah. Have you had the opportunity to drive by? I drive by every day. Okay. I live right nearby. So you know the area. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, we walked the property to see the nearness to neighbors, the layout, the available parking, uh, sight lines for cars entering and exiting the road. We toured the barn to see the work that had been done to it. We also explained that the abutting neighbors, um, which I believe is any within 300 feet, are notified and can attend the meeting or submit a letter regarding their position for or against. With that, uh, would the applicants like to speak and present your application to us? You can both, yeah, that's fine. Todd Rowland is my wife, Jessica Dobson. Uh, starting back, well, um, back when we renovated the, the farmhouse um, and we were married in it back in 2011, um, we have uh, done a lot of renovations to the property and um, we, my wife hosts a lot of family functions uh, to the point at which, um, you know, over the years we've been uh, approached by friends, family saying, you know, you should do this. Um, of you know, you know, for money, it, it, you know, just in terms of we're uh, always providing uh, you know this large venue for say Halloween or anniversary parties for our for our family, and um, you know, given the billion dollar business that resides in in Maine through the the wedding venue, um, just people uh, approached us about being able to uh, to do these venues in in our barn. Um, and, and when we purchased the land next door to us, we thought this would be a good opportunity for us to do some venues to help with getting more income, to help renovate our other property next door so we could um, save the farmhouse next door, renovate it. Um, there's a lot of work that needs to be done since most of you have driven by our other property next door. And so since I do events and I've been a a seasoned event planner for years with um, all the parties that I do outside of where we live other people's I go to other weddings and I'm a wedding coordinator for other weddings and stuff um, I thought it was a perfect opportunity to be able to rent out the barn and to make some money off doing some of these little functions um, in the next few years to help renovate the property next door so um, what we proposed is a, a limited exposure. Um, you know, I, I think we all understand that even you know May and June are we're bogged down with you know bugs and mosquitoes. So um, we're looking at a limited time frame at which you know the weather is at its peak and a limited amount because we live on the property and we're not looking to do this every weekend. Just to be able to host a few a year, to be able to, like we said make the extra income for the next door and um, and I love doing the functions it's a beautiful place and we have beautiful gardens and it's nice to share it 
with others, and we wanted to be able to offer it to our friends and family in Raymond that um, have been interested in hosting their weddings at our house. So, uh, We have, uh, over the last few weeks, we've collected signatures from our neighbors, also advocating for um, uh, one of which is the onion butter as well. Um, we certainly take into, into serious consideration any, any uh, issues that our neighbors would have. Um, uh, but we, we have been able to collect signatures um, uh, from almost all of the surrounding neighbors uh, advocating for our proposal. Did you bring those tonight? Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We do. We, we want to see those. Yeah, and I have copies for all of you. Thank you. Um, you know, we, uh, again, we're trying to, to create a limited opportunity. We, we understand, um, you know, that there's been nothing on the books um, since we approached Scott over a year and a half ago to, to look into this um, opportunity. So we are, um, we've met with him and Jim Seymour on two different occasions to talk through um, any of the limitations that the town ordinance would, um, would cite. But uh, to date, we're, we're given the impression that there is nothing that uh, explicitly addresses the opportunity that we're looking at. Anything else you'd like to add? Um, uh, I've met with uh, Wayne Jones to, to walk through it. You know, we're, um, we understand that this is uh, a multiple faceted approach with uh, town codes, fire safety, both on local and with, uh, with the state. Um, so I'm still proceeding with uh, a floor plan to submit to the fire marshal and to better understand what the um, you know, what safety concerns and safety renovations may be required. Okay, I want to open it up for questions. And I should have said earlier, just so everyone understands, um, after they do their presentation, we're going to open it up for questions. Um, and then anyone else who wants to speak for this application, then again, there's questions after each one, then we turn it over to those who want to speak against this, so everyone will get their opportunity to, to speak as we proceed. So I open it up to the board for questions. I have a question. How many um, events are a few a year? Uh, it would probably be, to for paid events, probably Four? Well, I guess the, in the range of four to six, it would depend upon the, um, you know, the I guess the size of the venue. Yeah, because some I'm talking like, you know, little bridal showers for friends, daughters and stuff that they've okay. already been coming, but I would like them to pay me for it. So. <laughs> yes, we're not so, talking, yeah. um, just to clarify, Len, we're not talking about having uh, large weddings, you know, each weekend. No. Uh, you know, we're we're aware of the, um, the disruption it would cause my wife and, and our family, you know, on our own premises because it's a lot to prepare for. Mm -hmm. um, but we're looking for just limited engagements and uh, to be honest, you know, some of the larger weddings are the ones which we wouldn't, you know, we, we understand that they're more difficult to work on and uh, we'd like to keep that to, you know, a limited number, you know, on the functions that you've had, mm -hmm. um, has there been alcohol in any of those? Uh, yes, and but the, if it's sorry. if it's okay. catered, um, it's um, so if it's a personal family function, it's BYOB. But if it was a wedding, it was catered, and the catering service has liquor license. And if we are to do it as a business, um, anyone that rented would have their own liability insurance, liquor license, um, and so forth. So. Have you ever had occasion to call the police or no. you know, handle drunks or that, no. you know, no. that kind of thing? No. Can you tell us a little bit about parking? Yep. We have, um, so our property next door, we have an entrance through the rock wall and there's two fields over there. Mm -hmm. There's pictures that were in your proposal. That would be to the right of your house? Yes. yes, and um, those fields um, can hold 
approximately around a little over 100 cars if we needed to. Um, That's a conservative estimate, right. giving each space uh, 10 foot wide and 20 feet. And we'd be looking to host, if it is a wedding and it's a larger, it would only be about 140 people um, attending, nothing more than that. And so there's plenty of off-street parking. No one actually sees the cars from our property. So. Have you had, say, 100 cars at an event? We did. Last year we hosted for a friend, and we did that, yeah. And did you have any trouble at all with oil or gasoline leaking no. into the soil no. or in the no. water? No, we did not, no. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Did you say how much square footage that parking area is that, yes. um, that I did. held 100 cars? Uh, the top section of the... Uh, of the field, or like I guess the, the upper field, is uh, approximately 100 feet by 132 feet. Um, and then the main main dimensions of the lower field are 130 to 140 feet wide and uh, 250 feet long. And it does extend even further down back, but um, again, the the main portion of it would to be roughly 140 by 250. The main portion of it? Yeah. So did, it, did you just say, so there's a 13,200 square foot section? Uh, yeah, when you, uh, when you come off of the road yep. in, into, the first, into the first field that is lined by rock walls, it, that's roughly 100 feet by 132 feet. Right. Then you can go down to the what we just cite as the lower field, okay, which is closer to you know a, a playing field size. I have to get my calculator for that one. 130 by 250 approximately, or 140 by 250. Yes. We'll say 135. Okay. Figure that out. So even if there were parking on, you know, either side of that field going down, and then and also parking within the middle section, there would still be ample room for uh, fire vehicles to, to get through. Other questions? Is there a formula for how many porta potties you need for how many guests? Uh, usually it's two for the amount, of, if you have like a function for 140 people to 120 to 142 porta potties. Um, that's kind of... How many have you had when you've had 140 guests? Um, we've had ours. We've had three. And that worked out? Yeah, it works out great. And we put them on the back side of the barn where you don't see them. So it's, yep, it's accessible to everyone. It's lighted. So. I know at the, at the site what you told us about... Um, Portable water supplies. Could you just touch on that, please? Do you mean outside spigots, or, or I mean, general? how are you going to get water to the caterers, etc.? Uh, so there's there's spigots on the back side of the house that the caterers can use. There are two spigots there's over two. on the section which the catering uh, had used for um, for our friend's wedding last year. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's um, within ten feet of In the staging area. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I, okay, the first is the location of the tents is critical, I think, to the neighboring residences as well as the business's parking lot. The planning of the parking lot is critical to the roadway and the topographic features of the land where it will be located. And this is from our ordinance, Article 9 and Article 10. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to have a, a sign out of any kind? It's not our intent. That was temporary our or permanent? Mm -hmm. uh, the only, I think the only signage would be for to no parking. Just like the day of, just the day say, of. to park. Because okay. yeah. that would be under Article 9 as well for signage. Yeah. Um, because the business will be commercial, uh, your water source, I would think, would have to be tested and be properly, pro properly uh, delivered. So and I'm sure. Well, because it's a um, kind, a lot of these functions are in a tent, which is not a permanent structure. And a lot of the catering services that come in are used to doing these venues that are off site. 
some of them don't go to these venues in the middle of nowhere and they don't have any water supply. So they, they tend to bring everything that they need for their, for their own. Is that what you're saying? Well, I would hope so because yeah. I think if, if you are they, conducting this as a commercial business, which it sounds like you are, then it seems to me that the state would get involved with your water supply for the public. Um, a lot of these um, barn venues are in remote locations or they're further away from houses, and so catering services usually... Yeah, but that's the caterer. Oh, okay. So, yeah, and then for the people, for washing your hands, porta-potties have the pump stations. Is that what you're talking about? Well, it's all going to be included in, in what happens to this if you, you know, because this is a commercial endeavor, and I would assume that the state rules for water supply and whatever would be just like if it was a restaurant set up as a restaurant. I may be wrong in that, yeah, I but it's something to be considered. Louise, just to back you up a little yeah. bit, with, I think you know, part of what she may be return, referring to, and we'll have to look at the minimum standards for conditional uses under Article 9. Mm -hmm. Number eight is we'll have sufficient potable water available for its needs. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, maybe for us it'll be what does that mean? And Scott, maybe you'll be able to help us with that. Yeah, probably when it comes through that, I mean, that's some of this come, what would come after if they're approved, that we would have to see what exactly the standards were and what they would have to meet for that. Right. Um, you know, if they had to make to some adjustments or whatever that they require, um, then we would deal with it at that point. Okay. Um, I also have a question as to whether, since this is a business, whether it shouldn't be coming come through the planning board for a site plan review. Um, I don't think it, it, it would like to have a commercial function, party business in a currently quiet neighborhood. I think that the disruption from this business would devalue the neighbor's property investment. There is also the question of customer personal facilities, the bathrooms and everything which you've already talked about. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's all I've got. I think Jim and I had talked to him earlier and we thought that the planning board would not be required for this venue. That was our summation, that it would be more of a conditional use than a planning board issue. Okay. Patricia, any questions? I'm just confused about the conditional use and it being commercial at the same time. Because it's not year round. We're not looking to make it commercial, like year round, like this is a business, come in any time you want. This is a conditional use for a small amount of events a year from 30 people to 150 at the most, um, a few times a year during, you know, the summer to early fall months. So it's, we're not looking at to just be like doors are open 24-7, 365. So, that's, I think, where we came up with the conditional use because it's a, it's a smaller thing that we're proposing, not to like put up signage and change it into an event center. That's not what we're doing. Our idea is more to make it more, you know, to help preserve our land and to let the people that we choose to host a function for be able to use the barn and make a profit from it. So. You know, we yeah. looked at it as if you look under for conditional uses as a quasi public. In other words, that they met certain. It wasn't. They wouldn't meet every month all year round. It would be a limited, um, a limited event structure. So that's why we thought it was best to go under conditional. That they met that um, quasi where it was just it just doesn't happen every all the time every month every year. Um, mm. So yeah, yeah it, it just sorry. Uh, under conditional uses, three. Um, we're looking at Article Four district regulations for rural residential. And what Scott's referring to is under three um, G one one that is permitted as a public and quasi public recreation building and facility. Um, we, we have no definitions as to what that means. Is that to our determination? Yeah, I mean it's it's your determination to interpret that. There are there are no definitions um, of either the quasi public or public recreation building facilities. You know, I think the general understanding of that would be places where people could come to gather. So it doesn't um, have to be open to the public because these would be in. That's right. That's right. Yeah, and, and the quasi public suggests that it's something other than just 
um, like this building, okay. which is obviously just for the you know publicly owned and operated. That there's some sort of quasi component to it. Okay. Um, limited use, um, that sort of thing. Yeah. And, and if, My if question: I, How do we? I don't. I, once a conditional use is granted. How is that regulated? How is any of that regulated? You can put conditions on that approval, whatever. If you wanted to limit the number, you could limit the number. Um, there may be other conditions that you could put on there. I'm sure the fire department may have some things that they would like to put on there that they're notified or whatever they decide. Uh, but you can put conditions on there to limit it. You could put a certain number and say if they chose to go above that number, they would have to come back in front of the Zoning Board of Appeals, you could do that route. Um, it's kind of up to you what you want to put on it. Okay, so there could be some kind of check and balance where approvals have to be made through the fire department so they would know if they were going over any particular number because they have to be notified. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, we would just, they would, they would basically, would whether how the fire department would want to do it or not, that they would want to be notified 24 hours and that would be our way of keeping ideas keep a check on the number I mean as long as they keep it at the number that you choose then they're fine okay that's sort of regular yeah no we we can to Scott's point we can right. put um, any conditions, conditions. We can really any reason. yeah it's, okay. yeah, it's yeah. similar to the ordinances in other towns for people that have venues like that and just to point you to what Scott was referring to it's an article 6 B D, B1D, that's the Board of Appeal section, mm -hmm. and your powers and duties. Yes. There's a specific power and duty to grant and hear denials for uh, and approvals for conditional use permits, and that you may impose such conditions as yes. you deem necessary. Um, to, uh, so that would take care of regulating it? Yeah. Okay. Yep. I'm good with this thing. Thank you. Other than that, I have no other questions. Louise, um, I have a question for Mr. Susie. Yeah. Uh, what's in my craw is the difference between conditional use and commercial and where this is blending the two is that okay I mean is, is that something that that we are able to okay for, for the public well, it's a good for, question for the I mean, people of Raymond I mean I think the threshold question you have is is this one of the does, does this fit within one of the conditional uses that's in the ordinance and what Scott has suggested and I think the applicants are suggesting that it fits within the public or quasi public recreation building and facility so not a quote commercial use exactly. but but that use and so you would want to f determine if it fits in there is that kind of you know barn use is a quasi public f facility if it is if you think it does fit that use then you would go to the conditional use standards and see if it also meets all the conditional use standards because that's a conditional use in the zone so that means okay, it's so allowed what's the difference between public and commercial is it the same thing it's it's unfortunately not defined in your ordinance so you're gonna have to make that determination um, it doesn't say municipal use or governmental use. You'll sometimes see that. So it suggests something different. It could be used anything from playing fields and town halls to uh, event spaces, um, or even like a Knights of Columbus Hall, for example, which may be a pr private yeah. use, but it's open to the public um, for events and weddings and things like that. So I think there, without a without a specific definition in your ordinance, it's it's left to be somewhat broad and up to the interpretation of the board. I think what I'd like yeah. to do is bring this back to yeah. let's finish up with uh, questions of the applicants because I've got a few and then I like the direction you're going Louise we'll bring that back to maybe the, the board discussion once we finish the public portion of the questions here um, I have a question about where you drive down to get to the parking I'm trying to remember there's a, there's a road down there mm -hmm. is that correct is that a right-of-way what is that an easement it's an easement mm -hmm. so who else uses that uh, the property behind us has the right to pass through their land law the land behind us okay so, so it's that's our their only access yes to their yes okay. so they have uh, ingress and egress mm -hmm. so it's a right it's um an easement thank you easement from back lot and did they sign uh, on yours no. or they they no. did not they might be one of our. I think. I think. I think, yes. I think, I think one of the letters is. From okay, we'll get to that. And, um, yeah. That's to get to the back lot, and um, I'll quickly address and just toss this aside. I know when we look at various ordinances, and we've all been talking about parking a little bit. Uh, just generally, it 
we require a nine by 18 space, so that's 162 square feet. Anyone feel free to check my math on the other per space. So if we're talking 140 cars, we need 22,680 square feet, which is a little over half an acre, if I have that correct. Mm -hmm. um, and the space that you've mentioned, unless anyone knows differently, is 46,950 square feet. So it sounds like space-wise, you got that number covered for the maximum number of people. Would the caterers come in one truck? They or? usually, yeah. They, they just come in one. Yeah, together. whenever you go to those functions, they usually all either commute together or they may have one or two other vehicles that they bring through, but yeah. Okay. They, usually is a, they usually will park next to the venue, not so yeah. much where the general parking is at, That's so they wouldn't point. be taking up any spaces, yeah. most likely. Mm -hmm. You also have to figure in the driveways between spaces. That's going to take up more space. Um, and and really, if we're looking to host the most 140 people, not every person right. drives their own vehicle. Right. I'm looking but at the yeah. worst case yeah. scenario <laughs> to know that if you're yeah. covered by that, right. then you're pretty much covered by everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we can figure that out, um, Louise, to get in through, right, the space around to drive yeah, around to and get to. The traffic flow yep. to the spaces. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. That's a fair question. Um, which we can, again, in the board discussion, we can talk about. So if you're talking about four to six events for the summer, and I think you said July through the first week of October, um, how many of those do you think would be the larger, the weddings, the maximum size? Probably two. Two maybe, out of the four. Yeah, six. or maybe three. I'm not looking to, that's a lot of work that goes into the bigger wedding, so. And is it just the two of you that would be considered workers, or you have yes. more family members that would be, she'd be uh, working at this If event? anything, my sister would come help, but yes. It's so two to three of you. Yeah. Um, so. And then I had a question. If you just held, um, if you were limited to just events that had to be contained within the barn structure itself, within the you said barn. you could fit 65 people? Yeah. Um, for sit-down dinners, probably 70 at the most. Yeah. 65 70. to 70, 70 people. Yep. And if you did that, mm -hmm. would you bring in porta-potties for that as well? Or what would they use for a bathroom? Because there's no, there's no bathroom in the barn. No, no. We would right. have to. Yeah. If it's going to be, I would say, I mean, the smaller functions don't, like, if it's just like a three-hour thing for a, um, bridal shower or birthday party, you know, with they they would not have to bring in a porta potty. Um, but um, it would depend on what the code is for As I say, that was just kind of it's basically something that we would address afterwards depending on whether it was granted or not granted. Right. That's just I mean you could put it in like make sure that they meet be compliant with something all local codes. We um, can be assured that would be addressed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, you could put that as part of your conditions that they meet that. Um, and as far as music, what kind of music do you have at these events? DJs, bands? What? Uh, usually people nowadays do their own music on, on our little speakers that we have. Everything can be put on your phone. Um, the venue we did last summer, they did bring in a DJ, which I wasn't impressed with because he was kind of loud. So I would make sure that um, if it is a DJ, the noise decibels have to be kept to 100, um, not be too loud. And as for bands, um, I, I don't encourage bands just because of wh how we're set up. I would encourage more just do you know the speakers with the music, and it, that's always been fine. Um, you know, the smaller speakers, you know, it's a, you know, they're not huge functions, so you don't really need to blast everyone out. Yeah. <laughs> um, and let's see, so forgive me, I just want to see what else they have. And the weddings will usually be on a, you know, if they are, would be on a Saturday from 4 to 10, 30. Um, you know, with people departing at 11, so. And music is usually only for the dancing period for those few hours, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any further questions from the board? No. Any questions for these folks from anyone? Yes. 
Could you, could you yeah, step up go. to the podium, Closer. sir? <clears throat> Make sure they sign. Yeah, make sure everyone Where signs in. Sign right here. Yeah, thank you. If you don't mind, you can when you're ready to speak, just tell us your name and where you live and Most your affiliation here. Sure. Hey. My name is uh, Nate Dixon. I'm from 266 Webbs Mills Road, and uh, one of the concerns I have would be essentially the noise. Um, I don't know if I've ever been to a wedding that wasn't noisy. Um, the other question I had would be the easement to the parking, um, where <coughs> that would be your access. Would that be part of your responsibility to take care of that road? Or would it just be completely on the person out back or whoever else has access to it? And um, it's kind of the questions I'm at right now, I guess. That's great. Thank you. Thanks. You folks, can you address? Um, have you heard some of our functions in the past that we've thrown? Uh, no, I'm just, I don't know. I guess I've been to many weddings or yeah. functions that <laughs> kind of just concern. I don't know. Okay. I'm just wondering. I've never had a off Webb's Mill Road. Um, I don't think off Webb's Mill Road it would be an issue for you okay. to hear anything. Yep. Um, as for the easement, that is a, um, you know, that part of who maintains the easement I don't think really applies to this. The easement is maintained by, it's our land, so okay. we own it. So. Sure. So you guys do maintain it um, right now? The person who's down back, whoever owns that land, has the right to get to their property. <laughs> So they also have the right to clear, you know, in the winter time to plow it. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, they can't unearth anything. They can't change the road in any way without our permission. So, well, same as you guys couldn't do anything to impede his access. Right. He has to have yep. He access. has the right to ingress and egress, and not a thing would be blocking his entrance or exit. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That, but what how about the maintenance of that piece of road? Uh, let's say that because of your traffic, it becomes a mud hole. Oh, wait. Are you are you going to be responsible for maintaining the road so they can get down to their property? If you're trying to use this as a congressional way. Right. Again, right. again, it's a limited amount, and we do these. Been doing functions on our property for family and friends, um, having parties for you know, 12 years, and we've used that road plenty and used it for parking um, on the other side, and it's never been a problem. It is You've a, never had a pothole that needed repair in it or anything? No, it's not a, it's not, it's a dirt, it's a dirt track that goes through, so. Yeah, it was um, recently can, put in, it's well constructed yeah, as a driveway. Yeah, Scott can attest it's to it, he has, he has seen it. It's not a road type -ish driveway. Yeah, and if there was a pothole that was bothering anyone including us we would definitely fix it since it is our land mm -hmm. and we do access it and i mean just just do understand that you know we're picturing over time every road has an issue here and there right. we just want to assure yep. there's no negative impact to someone else who would have to use that road to what um what business you might be conducting right that well. nope that is no nope. there wouldn't be and I'm sure if we needed to put a condition If anything, on that, we, we, we actually are maybe even yeah. thinking about putting speed bumps in to slow traffic going through. So, and we have the right to since we own the land. So, um, but yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Again, these are questions up to the applicant, please. It will have anyone who wants to speak for or opposed wants to say more they can after this point. This is just to ask them questions about their application. Brenda McMacken, 107 Thomas Pond Terrace. Um, just as I'm listening, I, I know that over time you're saying this is what we expect and I, I'm picturing that over time you're going to want more and what's going, what's the difference between them, you're doing something for pay, please and what's the difference yeah. between um, 
the ones that they are choosing to get paid for versus having more and more that they do for their family. I mean, I, I would just picture this would get more and more over the years. Well, that's, that's the idea of them putting a conditional conditions on there that they could limit the amount of events that they could do, whether it be paid or whether unpaid. it be paid or they personal. Could, possibly, yeah. Because that's what I'm hearing is that okay, we can limit what you're getting paid for, but that isn't limiting the total number that they can have in a year, and that would be something that. As so, what is your question then? What. What do you have, what will there be in place for total, um, total amount of, that they can have in a year and, and what the conditions can be versus how much they get paid for versus maybe increased number of family parties? So you're Just asking, a curi curiosity for example, more than anything. For, for what we're doing here tonight yeah. and any conditions we impose upon this, if it were to um, pass, you're asking if that also, if any non-paid functions would also fall, fall under those conditions? Yeah, yeah. It's just a I'm curiosity on would. that. They would. Yeah. Okay. That's a good question. Thank you. Yep. I just talked to Phil about that very same thing. Um, it's a condition you can put on it. I mean, there is obviously a fine line between yeah, what someone thing? using their property for their family and friends. Right. right? That's, a different, that's a different situation than what they're asking for. Um, but you could put a condition on, you know, the size uh, of the, the gathering, for example, the number of these kind of gatherings, um, that sort of thing. And so number would mean anything, whether it's paid or not. Yes, although I do think it's a little bit difficult to say. Yeah. I mean, you know, for example, when you have your, your grandparents and your extended family over, should that really count as something that you're regulating as a town? Because right. you wouldn't do that in any other single family home. Yeah. Um, what they're really asking for is a vent that doesn't neatly fit within all these categories, but um, but what they're suggesting, and Scott has suggested, is it fits within this quasi-recreation facility. So it's really talking about the, the paid events, the way I'm looking at it. But you could have other conditions, like to the extent that there were larger gatherings, you should do X, Y, or Z, or you know, an hours limitation, that sort of thing. I got you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But it re it really falls under the purview of. The, the paid sort of functions is what we're talking about, events, yeah. right, yeah. In, a, in a sense. Yeah. But, however, we could put conditions that would <coughs> limit what could happen with non-paid functions as well with the same, the same property. Okay. Any other questions for the applicant? No. At this time? We can bring you back if we have more. <laughs> so, but thank you. You guys well, want to have At this point, point, would you like us to provide the... Um, Signatures? Yes, please. That would be wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> I feel like I need to give it to you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wants to speak for? Thank you. Is there anyone who wants to speak against? Okay. If you, thank you. You can start signing in. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. And now, uh, while you're signing in, I'm just going to read this quickly to get on the record. Dear zoning board members, as neighbors of Jessica Dobson and Todd Roma, we want to express our support of their intended land use. We have lived near the Roma farm for many years and have never found their previous functions to be of any disturbance to us. We do not see a problem allowing a conditional use permit. Thank you for your time. And we have Charissa Kerr, I believe, at 10 Evergreen Terrace. Do I have that right? Um, is it Gage Hamilton? Mm -hmm. Correct. 157 Raymond Hill, Margie Swick, 138 Raymond Hill. Uh, that is the Martin Straw. Thank you so much. <laughs> 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 Never going to get that. Uh, is it Ann? Uh, Annie Meyer. Meyer, 130 Raymond Hill Road, I think. Mm -hmm. Deborah Labby, 190 Raymond Hill Road. Robert Payne. And Payne, 
senior. Thank you. Nine Christmas tree. tree. Yes. Justin Brown, 154 Raymond Hill. Emerald Irvin, 154 Raymond Hill. And Nancy Jodry, 163 Raymond Hill. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, my name is Catherine Plummer. I live at 147 Raymond Hill Road. Um, I'd like to read my letter for the record. Thank you. That was sent to the board. To members of the board, First, we would like to thank you for your volunteer service on the board for the town of Raymond. Your dedication, commitment, and thoughtful deliberations regarding potential changes to our ordinances that could impact economic, social, and general quality of life for the residents of Raymond are essential priorities in upholding the mission of Raymond. Your work is of great value to the community you serve. We have reviewed the Zoning Board of Appeals application and associated documents regarding the conditional use permit for a barn venue at 141 Raymond Hill Road, Raymond, Maine. As a direct abutter to the property, there are significant concerns with the application and the use outline. The following is our analysis. The proposed use is not an allowed use. The use of property as the site of both the applicant's home and seasonal business, as proposed by the applicants, is a mixed-use, single-family, commercial use that is expressly prohibited by the town's comprehensive plan. See the comprehensive plan table 2, summary of uses by district at 9-10. Nor is, the, is this use listed as a permitted use or a conditional use in the rural residential district. Ordinance Article 4, Section D2-D3. Accordingly, putting aside the fact that this use is expressly prohibited by the Comprehensive Plan, the Zoning Board of Appeals can allow an unlisted use only if it finds that the proposed use is similar to and no more objectionable than the listed allowed uses. Case Law, Your Home, Inc. v. City of Portland, 432A 2D, 1250, 1259-60, Maine, 1981. The application fails this allowed use threshold, which must be addressed before consideration, considering the specific conditional use review criteria set forth in the ordinance. In making the determination that the proposed use is similar to and no more objectionable than listed, uses al listed allowed uses, the board must compare it to other listed uses and consider if allowing the use would be consistent with the comprehensive plan. If it would not be consistent, then the proposed use cannot be similar to and no more objectionable than listed allowed uses because the ordinance provision allowing it would be, inv would be invalid under state law which requires that zoning ordinances must be consistent with comprehensive plans. See 30 AMRS section 43522. The proposed use is plainly contrary to the land use ordinance as well as the town's comprehensive plan. The ordinance explains that the RR zoning district is intended to remain rural while allowing for certain residential growth. The town of Raymond recognizes that certain areas of town will experience residential growth due to rapid population growth in the region. It is the intent of this ordinance to allow these uses while maintaining the basic rural orientation of the community. Ordinance Article 4, Section 1, D1. Accordingly, the ordinance allows certain permitted uses that maintain the basic rural orientation of this district, single family homes, certain agricultural uses, and very limited commercial uses, and certain conditional uses that limit commercial activities that may occur in this district. For example, bed and breakfast establishments are a permitted use in the RR district only if they do not exceed five rentable rooms and do not serve alcohol. Neighborhood grocery stores are allowed in the RR district with the conditional use permit from the ZBA only if they do not exceed 1,000 square feet for retail space, including storage. 
commercial use of the property as the site of both the applicant's home and seasonal business, such as that proposed by the applicants, with a capacity of up to 140 plus people, caterers, multiple exterior tents, portable toilets, alcohol, and music, well exceeds the minimal impact, impactful commercial uses allowed in this rural residential area and is a mixed use, single family commercial use. Such use is more properly cited in the commercial district where the majority of commercial uses are presently located. See comprehensive plan at 9-2. Indeed, the comprehensive plan sets forth a goal of directing a majority of the growth to designated growth areas and away from rural areas in an effort to combat the pattern of sprawl currently affecting Raymond. See comprehensive plan at 9-4. In no uncertain terms, the comprehensive plan sets forth the following land use goal. Maintain the rural character of Raymond. See comprehensive plan at 12-16, capitalization in original. See also comprehensive plan at 7-3. A major goal of the plan is to maintain the rural character of Raymond while directing the growth, growth areas of the community and discouraging inappropriate growth in the rural areas of town. In support of that goal, the town has adopted a policy of ensuring that the majority of growth over the next 10 years occurs in Raymond's growth districts, the commercial, industrial, and village one districts. See comprehensive plan at 12-16. While the comprehensive plan does allow new commercial growth, it is to be concentrated within the existing commercial zoning districts. See Comprehensive Plan at 12-17. Similarly, the Comprehensive Plan's policies of expanding the commercial tax base is limited to the commercial district. Encourage appropriate, low-impact commercial development and enhancement of existing businesses within the existing commercial zone. Comprehensive Plan at 12-7. The applicant's proposed commercial use is not only outside of the existing commercial zoning districts, and thus contrary to the plain language and the intent of both the ordinance and the comprehensive plan, it also is not a low impact commercial development that would be appropriate in the RR district. It is thus neither, it, it is, it thus is neither is similar to nor more objectionable than allowed uses and cannot be allowed use in the RR district. Because the proposed use is not similar to and no more objectionable than allowed uses, it is not an allowed use and the application should be denied on that basis alone. There is no need or ability to apply the conditional use criteria. Nevertheless, in the event that this board does find that the proposed use is an allowed use, the proposed use cannot comply with the conditional use requirements and parking provisions of the ordinance as described below. Even if the proposed use were an allowed use, the proposed use cannot comply with the conditional use minimum standards. The ordinance provides that the CBA cannot approve a conditional use application or even approve such applications with conditions unless it makes a positive finding based on the information the applicants have, pre have presented and that the proposed use meets each and every one of the following 10 elements. Ordinance Article 9, Section A. Based on the information provided, the ZBA cannot even make one of the requisite findings, let alone all of the requisite findings that would allow it to approve the proposed use. One will not depart from the general purpose or intent of the ordinance, nor from the town's comprehensive plan. As described above, the proposed use departs entirely from the purpose and intent of the ordinance, which is to maintain the basic rural orientation of the community. Importantly, this mixed single family commercial use is not listed in the ordinance as allowable by the conditional use permit, nor is it similar to and no more objectionable than those uses that are allowed as described above. So too does it depart from the comprehensive plan which expressly prohibits the RR district 
the proposed mixed-use single-family commercial use and which further directs growth to the commercial districts and discourages non-residential growth in the RR district. Number two, will be compatible with permitted uses within the zone as determined by population, density, design, scale, and bulk of any proposed new structures and intensity of use. The intensity of the proposed use is not compatible with the permitted uses within the RR district, which allows limited commercial uses such as small bed and breakfast that do not serve alcohol and certain conditional uses such as neighborhood grocery stores that do not exceed 1,000 square feet total. As described in the application, the proposed use would serve up to 140 people and would be spread across the barn, a tent outside the barn, and a catering tent outside the house. The applicants anticipate alcohol use and loud music until, until the conclusion of each event at 11 p.m. or at least until 10 p.m at which point the, the applicants would have guests turn down the music. And the use would include parking for 140 people and portable toilets. The applicants provide no square footage for their barn, nor for their anticipated tents that would be used for commercial events, nor for the footprint of the portable toilets that can be, accommodate 140 people. Accordingly, the ZBA cannot make a finding that the proposed use will be compatible with permitted uses within the zone as determined by population, density, design, or scale, and bulk of any proposed new structures. Furthermore, the use of portable toilets as the applicants propose is contrary to the ordinance provision governing facilities that serve food and beverages in residential districts which require an adequate septic system shall be provided to serve the maximum number of guests or customers who can be accommodated in accordance with the standards of Article 9, Section 8 of this ordinance, Ordinance Article 9, Section G. There is no evidence that the proposed use will comply with this requirement and the subsurface sewage disposal requirements of the ordinance, Ordinance Article 9, Section 8. In any event, the intensity of use falls well outside the minimal impactful com commercial uses allowed or allowed as conditional use in this rural residential area. Number three, will not generate noise, vibrations, fumes, odors, dust, or glare, which are detectable at the lot boundaries, and all aspects of the conditional use will be carried on within the structure. No noise, vibration, fumes, odors, dust, or glare studies have been conducted that would allow the ZBA to find that such would not be detectable at the lot boundaries. The applicants merely state that the music decibel would also be at a suitable level. This is insufficient and contrary to logic, particularly given that music will be played in an outdoor tent at such a volume that the applicants would have guests turn the music down by 10. Any music that would need to be turned down late in the evening to appease neighbors clearly is detectable at lot boundaries. And as we heard today, music would not be more than 100 decibels, which is at a rock concert level. State laws say that there are specific state laws that I've looked at that say that you can't be over 60 decibels. 100 decibels is 70 times more than 70 decibels. Furthermore, the applicant explicitly states that the majority of the use would occur outside the barn, given that it has a seating capacity of 30 to 65. Any larger event would be in a tent outside the barn. Similarly, bathrooms would be portable toilets located off the back of the barn, and caterers would be located off the back side of our house. Thus, the CBA cannot find that all aspects of the conditional use would be carried on within the structure. Indeed, little if any aspects of the conditional use would be carried on within the barn venue for which the applicants have applied. Number four, will not cause water pollution, sedimentation, erosion, contamination, any water supply, nor reduce the capacity of the land to hold water so that, the, so that a dangerous or unhealthy condition may result. There is insufficient evidence in the application for the ZBA to make this finding. 
However, parking lots and fields for hundreds of vehicles on a regular basis with the potential of leaking oil, gasoline, antifreeze would contaminate the groundwater, would poison wells, and affect the watershed that Raymond Hill provides to Raymond Pond. Number five, will not adversely impact any deer wintering area or other important plant or wildlife habitat or scenic areas such as views of Sebago Lake or mountains from public places. There is insufficient evidence in the application for the ZBA to make this finding. Number six, will not deny light or air to surrounding properties. There is insufficient evidence in the application for the ZBA to make this finding. Number seven, will not depreciate the ep economic value of surrounding properties. There is insufficient evidence in the application for the ZBA to make this finding. However, the Comprehensive Plan Committee made special note in the Comprehensive Plan that commercial development or redevelopment should be a visual asset to the community and that adjacent residential properties' values be protected. See Comprehensive Plan at 12-7. The ZBA should take utmost care to do so here. Number eight will have sufficient potable water available for its needs. There is insufficient evidence in the application for the ZBA to make this finding. The applicant merely states that it will not install plumbing to accommodate the use, but that caterers will have access to a hose for running water. There is no evidence that such water is portable or sufficient to serve 140 people plus caterers and their staff without affecting neighboring wells. Number nine, will not create a hazard to either pedestrian or vehicular traffic on the roads and sidewalks serving the proposed use as determined by the size and the condition of such roads and sidewalks, lighting, drainage, intensity of use by both pedestrians and also vehicles, and the visibility afforded to pedestrians and the operators of motor vehicles. There is insufficient evidence in the application for the ZBA to make this finding. However, the addition of cars serving 140 people plus catering trucks and trucks delivering and collecting portable toilets likely would overburden Raymond Hill Road and present a hazard to both pedestrians, pedestrians and vehicular traffic on the road. Raymond Hill Road falls entirely within the rural residential, rural or limited residential recreational one districts. It is not a road intended for commercial traffic at any time of the day or night. To the contrary, and as described above, the intensity of the proposed use simply is not anticipated in the RR or these or other similar restrictive districts which are intended to remain rural. Number 10, will not overburden police, fire, rescues, services as determined by response time, accessibility to the site, of the proposed use and the number and types of emergency personnel and equipment presently serving the community. There is insufficient evidence in the application for the ZBA to make this finding. However, as stated above, the addition of cars and trucks serving 140 people plus the serving of alcohol events likely would overburden the town's safety resources. The intensity of the proposed use simply is not anticipated in the RR district or in the town of Raymond, the explicit goal of which is to maintain rural character of Raymond. If the proposed use were an allowed use, the proposed use cannot comply with the off-street parking minimum standards. The application states that the parking for 140 people would occur in one of three fields on the property. This is prohibited under the ordinance. Within the RR district, or each of the principal and secondary uses permitted, off-street parking shall be provided in accordance with Article Section C, Ordinance Article 4, Section D6, Article 9, Section C, provides that no use of the premises shall be authorized unless it is in accordance with certain parking requirements, including one space for each 200 square feet or fraction thereof a gross floor area of any retail, wholesale or service establishment or office or professional building. Ordinance Article 9, Section C1F. One space for each three seats, permanent or otherwise. 
for patron use for restaurants or other places serving food or beverage or for theaters, auditoriums, or other places of amusement or assembly. Ordinance Article 9, Section C1G. For any structure or use not specifically enumerated above, the reviewing authority shall determine the number of off-street parking spaces required to accommodate customers, patrons, and employees based on the parking analysis submitted by the applicant. Ordinance Article 9, Section C1I. The application fails to provide any square footage information that would allow the ZBA to determine that the proposed parking of vehicles for 140 people plus catering trucks or other vehicles is insufficient. Nor does the application provide information that would allow the ZBA to determine that the proposed field parking would allow one space for every three patrons of any event nor have the applicants submitted a parking analysis that would allow the ZBA to determine the compliance of the ordinance should it choose to characterize the use as one other than a service establishment or a place serving food or beverages. Conclusion. In summary, the ZBA must ensure that any conditional use approval comports with both the letter and the intent of the ordinance and the comprehensive plan. The application for a conditional use permit for the proposed barn venue use of the property at 141 Raymond Hill Road conflicts with both. Not only does the comprehensive plan expressly prohibit such mixed use, single family commercial uses in the RR district, but even assuming that the proposed use is not prohibited, it cannot comply with the conditional use requirements. Uh, parking provisions of the ordinance. Approval of the application would violate both the ordinance and the comprehensive plan and would rob the Raymond Hill Road neighbors of their rights as set forth in the town's vision statement. Every inhabitant of the town of Raymond deserves and should be afforded privacy. The right to peace and well-being, security, education, an unspoiled environment, public safety, and guarantee democratic freedom, which is the freedom to live freely so long as it does not diminish the quality of life of our neighbors. Comprehensive plan at the vision statement. We encourage you to deny the conditional use permit application at the barn venue at 141 Raymond Hill Road. Again, thank you for your dedication and commitment to our community. Respectfully yours, Catherine M. Plummer, David W. Plummer, 147 Raymond Hill Road, Raymond, Maine. Note, as you observe from your site walk, our property is less than 40 feet from all of the proposed activities. I'll also have one other note. There currently exists two commercial online sites for the Romer Farm, advertising that they are open for business and they've been up for a while, and their services, the RomaFarm.com, the Roma Farm Facebook page that references events that they've been held held on commercial, in a commercial setting since July of two, 2018. Thank you. Thank you. Um, questions from the board? No. Very explicit. Did you write this? You asked me to write this yourselves? We did. Very well written. I, I have a question. Palmer. Um, just to be clear, on this map, which one is your property? Are you to the left or behind? I am. I, I, if you're on the Raymond Hill Road and you're facing the Romas, yeah. the plumbers sit right next to them. There's a stone wall in between. And so our, if I'm our, facing their barn, are you on the left or right? I'm on the left. On the left. Okay, I'm on the right. road. You can see my house. We're direct about us. Great. Thank you. And um, what has been your experience with the events they've held in the past? Their wedding venues are very loud. Um, I would also note that some of the, you've got a person who's just signed this agreement that they wouldn't object to this. They've only lived there uh, in the neighborhood for a month. So they're relatively new. They bought my mother-in-law's house. My mother-in-law lived in that house. And um, the noise from the music was 
very bothersome to her. Is that the most troublesome thing that you experience? I have people, when they have events, they turn around in my driveway. It gets my dogs so barking. Using your, yeah. um, the last event, there were people making U-turns in the middle of the road. Um, do you... Do you have any sense that some of the smaller events where they were contained within the barn? I don't recall ever seeing an event that was just contained in the barn. Okay. If if it were limited to that, do you think that would be um, as I problematic? I have a, a concern about traffic. I have a concern about the parking. I have concern about pollution. I have concern about people turning around in my driveway and the amount of traffic on the road. And that's even in, with, um, if there were only two large events allowed in a s complete year? I've heard conflicting information. Yeah. Mr. Roma had mentioned to me they wanted 10 events. He's mentioned to me up to 100 decibels. That's, that's unacceptable. Um, well, now we're talking about two to four. What, who's going to monitor these things if it's if that, it's That's approved? a fair question, but if we are allowed to put conditions on this, and if we restricted it, for example, to two, two events that were allowed to be held per season outside of the barn, everything you know, anything else had to be restricted to within the barn. Do you think that would be? And please speak freely. I, I, I'm, I want I'm, an honest I'm not, answer. I am not yes. in agreement with this at all because okay. I do not believe that it is supported by the comprehensive plan or the ordinance. Okay. And you heard, um, just this is very well written, so I'm just curious about your opinion. You heard our discussion earlier about a quasi-public, um, get the right term. Public say. commercial. What's that? The public commercial. Aspect. Yeah, uh, there is a uh, permitted conditional use of a quasi-public. Um, in that zone? In that zone, yeah. Um, did, did you have any comments on that? I did not. Okay. It was, and I know we need to, to look at, as you pointed out, it says we have to abide by the comprehensive plan as well and make sure there's no contradictions between the I two did things. seek legal counsel to review what we had written to make sure it was accurate. We used a land use practice yep. law firm and a very big law firm in Portland. Yeah, this is on Article 4, uh, D, Rural Residential District, um, under conditional uses that are permitted. One is a public and quasi-public recreational building and facility, which we discussed earlier. That's G. So I think when the board has a discussion with Scott and our attorney here, that you know maybe we can hammer out, is, is there a difference between that and what you've mentioned, the mixed-use single-family commercial? Because I'm... I just want to make sure I understand what's the difference here between the two. So thank you for pointing that out. Um, I think that's. Does anyone else have questions from Ms. Plummer? Uh, no question. I just I, mean, I would my one comment would just be that uh, uh, Kathy and David have always been very strong um, neighbors and friends of ours. Uh, they've given a lot. I'm going to have to ask you to go up there and speak. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, we just wanted to say that we respect what Kathy and David are saying. They've always been very supportive of us. Um, you know, I, I hope that I'm not misleading you when I talked about some things in the number uh, because we we're trying to be very respectful of the neighbors. Um, again, you were very instrumental in helping us when we started to rebuild our house. We respect you very much we respect this this decision you know we, we respect your decision to um, to raise these points um, I did uh, reach out to Kathy and David uh, to get an idea of if they did have concerns and I, I didn't hear back but I understand now that that's what you were formulating these these points um, you know I again I uh, I hope you don't cite this as being um, anything less than just holding to the your your interpretation of the comprehensive plan. Thank you. Um, and then the other addition would be that um, you know, our neighbors who, you're correct, I, I did just meet uh, through the neighbors who have been there and I um, I asked them about the request and, and you're correct that um, 
they have not lived there as long as the other neighbors, uh, but the other neighbors have been living there for years and have not had, had a concern. Um, and again, they you know, certainly did not, much more in general terms, uh, instead of having gone through the in, in aspects the, of the comprehensive the plan. The last thing, we, we had a small <coughs> function for like 30 people. It was a graduation party, and we didn't have a sign to, for the parking because we had a small one, so if someone turned around in her driveway, we apologize. We didn't, we didn't put any uh, balloons out or anything to let them know. Um, and we have had many parties in the barn. That obviously wasn't a problem for her. So, and we can even talk about location of the tent if that is a problem also. And I also wanted to point out, 100 decibels is actually not a rock concert level. 110 is. And it's kind of tricky the way that decibels, but we can, I mean, that's, that I is nothing. That is fine. Supporting documentation with me. I'd be happy to give you I think yeah. we'll wait and see yeah, if I mean, need that. Thank you, though, both very yeah. much. Okay. I'm fine I, with that. I do have a question. So sure. Do you have these websites out there that you've been advertising business and holding functions? No. I have. I did put out websites because I was anticipating by talking to Scott that we, would, if I do want to do functions for next year, I have to get something on the, you know, you have to get things out there to show. I have a Facebook page for the Roma Farm that shows my other parties that I've done. And I never say, call me tomorrow. I just say, I just show what we've been doing on our property. I show what the property looks like. You have to, when you set up like something like that on Facebook, they just have you put in your phone number and, and what the name of your, you know. I, so I do have it under the Roma Farm. It has pictures of things that we've done, what the property looks like. So, so in the future, if we do, I would make it up and running and it would already be there so that it would, it's a good business plan to put things, you know, all my pictures and stuff to be ready, so. So you have not booked hold anything? On, hold on once. No. Are there any I other haven't. questions for Catherine Plummer? No. Nope. You can sit down. There Thank are no you very much. Um, did you get, sorry, you have further questions for the room? She answered. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I mean, That's okay, on my phone. No, no worries. Um, is there anyone else here to speak opposed to this application? We do have a couple other letters that we need to read to put on the record. Does anybody want to read these? <laughs> Me doing all the talking? One, you want one? No, thank you. No? <laughs> Louise, you want to read one? You guys can okay. eat? If you don't mind. Uh, people are sick of hearing from me. <laughs> okay. My name is Tyson. Um, hello, my name is Tyson Butts. I am a long time resident of Raymond, Maine. I, lived at two, I live at 260 Webbs Mills Road with my wife and four children. It is my understanding that Mr. Roma and Ms. Dobson are applying for a variance to allow them to utilize the barn located at 141 Raymond Hill Road for commercial purposes, such as weddings and other large social gatherings. I strongly oppose this variance from being granted. I'm extremely concerned with the idea of what a venue like this could, would bring to our peaceful town of Raymond. The obvious noise pollution and gatherings of the size would introduce to the surrounding neighbors and close by farms would in my eyes be more than enough cause for concern. In case that is not, I will bring up some other key concerns. Gatherings of these sizes, size commonly are accompanied by nights of binge drinking, which will lead to a drastically increased chance of drinking and driving on our family-oriented roads. There is limited access to Raymond Hill Road. This would be increasing the risk of traffic backups and accidents in the surrounding area. There are no street lights on our secondary roads. When there were large events, overflowing parking would only have the option to park on Raymond Hill Road. The concern of pedestrians in harm's way is a real one. As we all know, the blind drives, active farmland, and winding roads that are established as far back as the 1800s pose great risk to those who are unfamiliar with our country-themed driving. Mm. Drivers new to navigating this area would be placing both of those of our community and party goers to 141 Raymond Hill Road at an unnecessary risk. The ability to regulate large gatherings safely is that of the site coordinator and local police department. If problems, which unfortunately frequently can occur in large parties, cannot be solved by the abilities of the coordinator, the use of our local sheriffs would have to be a solicited, um, resulting in less task force and higher traffic, more populated areas of our town. Upon my site drive-by and actively trying to envision what could be 20-plus vehicles all coming and going in large groups, I can safely say this background of Raymond 
would not and is not adequately set, set up for the extra traffic, <coughs> increasing the risks of injuries or worse amongst our fellow resident Raymond residents. I appreciate the concerns of myself and many other contributing members of our community being taken into consideration while the discussion process is underway. Thank you for hearing my words and understanding, and I am strongly opposed to this request of this rezoning. Sincerely, the Butts family. Dear Planning Board members, my name is Eric Heath, and I reside at 139 Raymond Hill Road, which property abuts the property zone by Todd Roma and Jessica Dobson, located at 141 Raymond Hill Road and 137 Raymond Hill Road. In order to access my landlocked residential property, I util utilize an express deeded easement from Raymond Hill Road to my property, which borders 141 Raymond Hill Road. It is my understanding that Mr. Roma and Ms. Dobson are applying for a variance to allow them to utilize the barn located at 141 Raymond Hill Road for commercial purposes, i.e. to host large parties of up to 140 plus or minus people, allow loud, loud music to be played during these parties, permit alcohol consumption without any real proper regulation, and to allow parking associated with those parties at 137 Raymond Hill Road utilizing my deeded easement. I strongly object to the proposals submitted to allow commercial use of the subject properties. My property is located in a rural residential area and the impact of parties to this magnitude would require on and possibly off road parking. Even if infrequent, this would have a significant impact upon my family and children. My other neighbors have personally voiced the same significant concerns and distaste of this venue. In addition, my property is currently advised, uh, I'm sorry, is currently advertised for sale, and I believe that allowing commercial use of the abutting properties would significantly diminish the market value of my property and potentially affect my ability to sell same within the relative near future and hold its value after the sale for the buyer. I strongly and respectively urge you to deny the request for a variance to allow commercial parties and additional parking on and off road for same. Thank you. Very truly yours, Eric Heath. Okay. Um, can you guys just make sure I know which ones they are on here, if you don't mind? Is one of them this one? That's, that's Kathy. Yeah. That's Eric right uh, there. Okay. So that's the other one. Okay. Thank you so much. And this one? That's Thornton. That's yeah. the last, last one. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Do you guys all? Right. Wait. So this is us. No, this is Thornton right here. Right here. Okay. So not that one. Thank you. He signed. He was signed. Who's the, the three, okay, we had Catherine Plummer's here, and the two letters, I just want to make sure which uh, So properties. Eric Heath's brother-in-law wrote that, the one that we're so that's in the lawsuit. Okay. Yeah. This one, this one, yes. and who's the third? Uh, he lives way down off of Butts, Butts is down off Webb's yeah. Mill. Okay, so not on here, He's okay, all right. Uh, may we address those letters? Yes. Um, Yes, I'll allow you to make comments. Does anyone oppose to that? No. no comments on that, if you don't mind stepping Positive up. now, if we've got any positives. <laughs> yeah. Please. Uh, my wife and I would like to say that while we do address the, uh, we recognize the question of increased traffic, um, we are aware that uh, the, and, and not to negate the concerns of the neighbor down back, um, but we would like to put it in perspective that we've had a, a lawsuit uh, against them for uh, overburdenment of the easement because of construction uh, facilities that were being placed down there. Um, we are in contention with those neighbors, and I believe they you know, have some friends that are around speaking for them, including Mr. Butts, who is his brother-in-law. So while we do... Um, recognize the concerns uh, we have also tr you know need to put them in there in perspective of of 
the rationale for these being raised. Yeah, and um, just understand that all we can do is take it value of the of letter course, and yep. keep everything else outside. Of that. course. But thank you so much. Okay. Okay, any other public comments? Uh, Wayne Jones, the fire inspector for the town of Raymond, um, met with the applicants. Um, we reviewed their plan. Um, basically, we did a site walk. And without uh, a lot of firm details as far as square footage and all that, um, tried to give them a sense of uh, what the fire rescue concerns would be as far as life and life safety and, and fire protection. And um, submitted a letter, I don't know if you folks have seen that or not, um, that outlined all that. Um, and at, if this moves forward uh, for approval, we would just ask that uh, the conditions in the, in the letter be a part of the approval. Any questions? No. Thank you so much. Mary, do you have that? No. Someone has that? Who has that? Scott has that. I have that. Probably have it in my email, but I don't have that. Okay. Going with my conditions needed. So, if approved. Okay, with that, I would like to close the public portion of this hearing and open it up for um, board discussion. And please, let's have some good discussion here, folks. This is complicated. Um, I know what we're charged with is whether this application we feel can meet um, any of the allowed conditional uses under rural residential district, um, which would be Article 4. So that is where we would start. Um, Scott, I meant to give you an opportunity. Do you have any comments, anything that you would like to make? Mm -hmm. um, well, as far as the subsurface one, that is something that we would have to definitely look at as far as the re state requirements for that. Um, but other than that, I mean, not as far as the individual conditional use. Um, uh, my concerns would be more structure and life safety with uh, Mr. Jones as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it's basically be your decision as to whether or not it's allowed in that in that district. No, right, but no. do we have to consider, we'll get to that about, if for example, we found that it met one of the permitted or conditional uses, which we're talking conditional use, then we would have to look at Article 9, um, the minimum standards for conditional use, and so we will have to walk through those mm -hmm. if we approve the conditional use, um, which we'll discuss as we go through this, you guys. But anything under there we will have to consider, right, like whether there's appropriate potable water, um, the noise, vibrations, fumes. And the potable water would be something that I would deal with. Um, fumes, that would be something that would be kind of hard to define as to how to deal with that one. Um, I'm not really sure how you would go about that. But as far as the potable water, that would be something that um, it would be more of a street state requirement for something that, that venue. I mean, it may not be something as simple as a hose. They maybe have to bring out the water supply out there, which, which would be a possibility. Okay, well, well, I'll hold that till we get there. Um, let's see. Okay, any comments? I'll start. Um, I personally have concern about it for the, for the neighborhood. Um, there is nothing like it up there at this moment in time. You have uh, two or three residences up there that have farm animals. The rest of them are residential housing. Um, I have concern about the lack of structure 
And I don't mean necessarily just the barn, but for a business of this type. Um, we're talking about the water, we're talking about parking, we're talking about uh, traffic, and like I earlier said something about a site plan review. You know, I, I still think that um, it's a concern, right down to whether they're going to put up a portable sign or permanent sign or anything that, uh, granted, can be taken care of later, as Scott said, but um, it would certainly be something that we would have to put in as conditions to any of this. Um, quite frankly, they can do what they want to as long as they don't charge money. So consequently, they have every right to use their property as they wish. But they've come before us to try and do it the correct way and uh, give us an opportunity to put conditions on this. Um, but until we go through the 10 questions that we've got to answer, I'm not right now going one way or the other. Right. You know, and, and thank you. I'm not looking for you guys to go one way or the other. It's to give you the opportunity to ask questions of amongst ourselves. Um, we have an attorney here. We have Scott here. So, yeah. I'd like to ask the attorney, uh, I'm confused about the comprehensive plan. Is it law or isn't it? So the courts have said it's not an ordinance, right? It's a guiding principle. Okay. It's a requirement. Um, it's a, uh, I should say, a prerequisite to adopting a zoning ordinance. So state law says if you're going to have a zoning ordinance, you have to have a comprehensive plan, um, which are supposed to be 10 years in, in length. I think yours is now beyond that. Um, but that's what underlines your, underlies your zoning ordinance. And then the zoning ordinance has to be in, uh, uh, consistent with the comprehensive plan. So the comprehensive plan sets out, uh, does sort of a survey, and then where you want to go as a community. So it'll have a future land use component, which yours does. Um, and it'll say, in this area, these are the types of uses. But what the courts have said is that is more of a guiding principle, if you will. It's okay. not the law. The law of the town is in your ordinance. Okay. Now, the thing that's made it um, a, little bit, a little bit more gray is that one of the standards you have to find in your conditional use is that it does not depart from the general purpose and intent of the ordinance. Um, or the comprehensive plan. So it sort of brings it in, um, in the sense that you have to sort of determine whether it like fits within what would be anticipated if it wasn't already listed. Um, so that's, that's a little gray because you couldn't, you shouldn't have an or, a, a, a use here if it didn't already, um, uh, wasn't consistent with the comprehensive plan because that's one of the prerequisites. Mm -hmm. um, now, I, I mean, I think this, the first step, I think what you need to do is first determine, is this one of the conditional uses that's allowed? Because you don't have a category, like some towns have a catch-all category, which is other uses that are similar to the above conditional and permitted uses. And that's and then it gives you some, some discretion. You don't have that. So it's got to fit within either the permitted uses or the conditional uses. Um, and then if it does fit within the conditional uses, you go to the to the standards and apply the standards. If it doesn't fit, then you would just say it's not an allowed use. You wouldn't even need to necessarily go through these standards. So I think that's sort of the threshold question for the board mm -hmm. is to, um, you know, Scott in his role as the code officer has suggested and, and the applicants have suggested that the public and quasi-public recreation building facilities is the closest category. Mm -hmm. So I think we should look at that. The one thing I would say is it's not defined. So unfortunately that doesn't provide a lot of guidance for the board. Um, but um, what Louisa said, uh, part of what Louise said is actually part of what is how a court has said you should look at interpreting ordinances is you look at the ordinance as a whole. If the plain language is not plain, which I would argue is, is clear here, then what the courts have guided you to do is to look at, to make sure that when you're interpreting ordinance that it's in harmony with the overall ordinance. So what are the kinds of uses, would it, would it fit within, if you were to define it as including a wedding venue within that definition of quasi-public, is that consistent with the other types of uses and would it make sense as a whole, is what the courts have said, so not just in um, alone. Um, you, don't, you shouldn't get to illogical results, that's what the court says, mm -hmm. when you're interpreting an ordinance. Now that, that's not a lot of guidance for you, but at least gives you something and no, you need to put things in context. If, if we carefully um, consider each of them. That's right. And how, and that they're all somehow related, I guess you could say, or right. equal. Right. Equal, which I think is what Catherine Plummer was. Right. Um, so when you're when you're looking at that use or maybe one of the other uses, I'm not sure um, that that's any of the other uses are even being 
proposed as being close. Um, that's probably that's that's the use I think is what you need to decide. Um, is sort of is this a public or quasi public recreation facility in a facility? I think that's really your threshold question. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions before we jump into that part? No. No, I just I, I'm assuming we're going to clarify in the definition of quasi public. We're going to try. <laughs> 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 we're going to try. So. Um, As attorney, attorney Saucier has pointed out, um, what we're directed to do is look at Article 4D, Rural Residential District. Um, the intent, the town of Raymond recognizes that certain areas of town will experience residential growth due to rapid population growth in the region. It is the intent of this ordinance to allow these uses while maintaining the basic rural orientation of the community. Now the permitted uses, uh, A, one family dwelling to include modular homes, type two manufactured homes, amended 52005, we don't need to go there. B, churches. C, schools. D, public building, buildings and facilities. E, agriculture excluding commercial poultry and piggery operations. F, accessory uses and buildings. G, home occupations that conform to the requirements of Article 9, Section B. A home occupation which conforms to Article 9, Section B and which is specifically permitted by Article 12 of this ordinance shall be considered a permitted use. H, bed and breakfast in not to exceed five, not to exceed five rentable rooms and not to serve alcohol. I, boarding home not to exceed five rentable rooms excluding family living space. J, public utility and communication facilities. I want to make sure I'm following this properly. Um, K, mobile slash manufactured home, dot, dot, dot. I don't think we need to get into the detail of that one. So those are permitted uses in the RR district. Conditional uses, A, nursing home. B, neighborhood grocery store not to exceed 1,000 square feet of retail space, including storage. And I just will make a point that um, the applicants did put down that the barn itself is 30 by 40, so we're talking 1,200 square feet for that specific portion. C, cemeteries. The Town of Raymond Land Use Ordinance as adopted May 21st, 1994. Oh, sorry. Forgive me, it's my copy pasting over. D, funeral parlors. E, medical arts buildings. F, mineral extraction that conforms to Article 9, Section E of this ordinance. G, public and quasi-public recreation buildings and facilities. H, contractors not having more than five vehicles and pieces of equipment that are not screened from view from the surrounding property and street. When a piece of equipment is located on a trailer or truck, the combination shall be considered a vehicle and an additional piece of equipment. So those are the conditional uses. So thoughts on those, comments? I'll quickly just say as well, just like um, Attorney Saucier said, and Scott has commented, I think the only thing that jumps out at me is public and quasi-public recreation buildings and facilities. I don't see others that could be similar, but I think we have to pay attention to the others and the size and what's allowed with the others to make sure if we were to consider this, that we're not getting out of scope of what the town has said is okay in the RR district. Um, clearly, no one went in the direction of a home occupation because, I mean, no, what it's I located read, within the fit. home right, itself. It has to so, be. Yeah. Okay. And that's limited to size and yeah. stuff. So. Does anyone here see any other conditional uses they feel would be? that warrant further discussion or consideration? As being similar? Yes. Well, or with the bed and breakfast, considered. you only have the five rented, rentable yeah. rooms, rooms and that would calculate by so many people. Yeah. But to me that would be an overnight thing, so yeah. I don't think it would apply. Okay. No. Um, okay, then how do we feel about this? being a public or quasi-public recreational building and facility? I think the question there is building. 
you know, I think if they were just talking about the barn that has a roof that has sides, and I think most public venues, short of baseball diamonds, um, you know, probably are in a building. And if it, their endeavor can be contained within walls, which would solve some problems on noise pollution. Um, you know, the idea of a tent party bothers me because there are no walls. There is no way for any pollution of any kind not to escape. And so consequently, I, I really have a, a problem with the tent situation. Well, what kind of pollution escapes from the tent? Everything. Everything. Yeah. Like what? Well, noise primarily in this instance. Okay. But let's say um, they had space heaters or, I don't know. Lights. Um, they wanted to spray incense that all over the place. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't That's a I stretch. Yeah, it is. It is. But what I'm saying is anything that has walls is contained. Is is better. Is better. Well, and that's I mean what you're talking about is, you know, whether we could approve this and then you, we could um, put conditions that uh, the only events that take place have to be contained within the barn. That's what I'm thinking. Thoughts? I disagree. Uh, I know, I live in Raymond, and this may not be a good comparison, but some of the summer camps that are on the lake that I live on, they have all kinds of functions where they use their uh, dining halls, and then they have a tent. And um, I never hear any noise, and I've never in all the years uh, had an issue with any of that. I will say, that I'm very sympathetic to the neighbors and if they bought property assuming that this was rural residential I'm certain they never anticipated some sort of commercial commercialization of a property next door to them so I'm very sympathetic to that um, at the same time I understand I'm trying to consider if it's extremely limited with extreme conditions it's a valid point you bring up Louise we're at least putting regulations on which there's no, are we correct in that there's no limitation to them? As long as they don't get paid, they can keep doing what they're doing now. There, well, there, yeah, there really isn't anything. If it's a family function, there's nothing stopping them from doing that um, because basically it's a private, private party. It's not a, a public venue when, once you start, um, having charging money and people from away or, or however it's done, uh, to me that it would become a, at that time, it becomes a commercial operation. Mm -hmm. So the, the special amusement permit? Um, we do have one, but that, that dealt mostly with, um, I think that was mostly dealt with adult dancing that really didn't go after anything like this mm -hmm. that I recall reading through it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that's required, would be required every time they did an event or not. Um. Okay, so. Can I make a comment? I think that if we, granted there has to be a lot of exceptions and constrictions put on this, but if we said you can only use inside the barn, would that be profitable? I'm asking. Yeah, I know. <laughs> No. <laughs> okay. Again. Or would we be putting you out of business? Um, the proposed business? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh. Um, yes, we, the smaller, you know, a smaller function. Um, and there can be conditions that dancing has to be in the barn with the music, not under the tent. Um, that can be something which we do a lot and it, she didn't say it bothered her. And we want to be very respectful to Kathy and David because we really like them. I'm sorry, I'm going to cry a little bit. But, um, so 
it would be a it, limitation. It would, it would limitate because dinner would be outside. And dinner for a wedding is like from like four to six or something, you know. It's not like it's 10 o'clock at night and people are eating dinner out there. So, I mean, we can move people in. We can change. No I mean, we are very flexible. on, And, again, we're not looking to do this every weekend. We're just looking to... Um, a few opportunities outside of the ones that we have for our family. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. We, we don't have any type of opportunity to even have a temporary one year go with this and see. I mean, I, in a way, I'm with, with Louise. It just feels funny to me that this feels like a commercial. It does property that's going up, but we're doing this through the zoning board, and there's no other involvement from anyone in the town. It, I, it just seems strange, but. Um. Scott, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. If they did apply to the planning board, um, what would that be under their jurisdiction if they wanted it that way? So I was, I was kind of looking at it. There's a you know certain criteria that it come up to, and nothing kind of quite falls in there other than they just go for. Oh, I gotta find it now. Um, I think we just want to make sure if, that it gets done right. If it's just done for for you and yeah for, us. for everyone. Yeah, and I mean that's why when we came to Scott a year ago. Um, we had a meeting with him and Jim and at the fire safety, um, David, Mains. David Mains at the time. Mm -hmm. And then um, as we've been renovating, we met again with Scott and um, Jim um, and had another meeting with them. Because they, like they said, there's no ordinances for this. And we expressed what we wanted to do. He talked about the amusement ordinance, but then he's like, I don't know. So then... We, we talked about going in front of you because that would give a um, conditional use and you could set regulations on it instead of the town um, actually making an ordinance for this, which other towns have done, our abutting okay. towns have done, is they've put ordinances on it. It has to be, you know, yeah. in certain areas. So. And to your, uh, to your point that you mentioned, Louise, uh, the fact that it is open, we're just trying to do it the right way. We're trying to do right. it. Cause as no, that's, that's obvious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, as Scott said, we can throw as many weddings as we want on our property. There's no ordinance that says we can't. And to the, some but of the we, you know, yeah. And to some of the concerns that it, what we're proposing is very general and it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, uh, it, it hasn't been tested. Uh, you know, the the reason that we're coming to you is to get an idea of if this is something that we can do. Um, and then we would take the steps forward to make sure that everything complies. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, uh, you know, uh, in speaking to, to Wayne, we would make sure that you know, everything with uh, safety codes, uh, both local and state, would apply. So um, it's a matter of kind of taking baby steps. You know, do we make the investment and get all of these things done concerning potable water uh, before we know if it's even going to be feasible? So that's, you know, the. The avenue, and, and again, we um, we respect the, uh, the the concerns of our neighbors, um, and we understand it's a, a balance. Um, but we are you know, we we are able to do it for our family, you know, um, as it stands. We just wanted to expand it out a little bit because we yeah. are very proud of the of the location and what we've done with it. Thank you. That was to Luis's question as far as the site plan review. It doesn't, there's nothing as we're finding out fits it. I mean, th there is a slight um, in the authority and classification of uh, site plans, but it just says a substantial change to the use of an existing building mm -hmm. or facility. But I mean, it, but when you go down the individual staff review, minor site plan, site plan review, and major, it doesn't, what they're asking for doesn't fall under any of those. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, it, that's the harder part with that. Is it just it, there's nowhere to kind of put it. So yeah, because this, this hasn't been done. It's no. new. So yes. wherever we put it is where it's going to go. So, I mean, that's our concern as well. Mm -hmm. It's just setting precedent for the next one that comes along. Um, 
So with that, any other comments? We can. I do have a question. I think yeah. that's the circle that we keep going around. Is mm. it is a technically it's commercial. That's right. Mm. And we're trying to treat it like it's not. And I that's think what it feels in like. doing so, we're putting ourselves in a position to you know pick through the words until we can get it to fit. And that's where I think we can uh, make a wrong turn mm -hmm. personally. Um, and I, I guess we, we just have to decide if it fits this or not. We have to vote on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So with that, is there a motion that anyone would like to make? Are we going down through the questions? Is that where well, we're first, at? Well, the first step is we have to decide whether we can grant the conditional use. If we decide we can, then we have to go through the minimum standards for conditional uses. So the first step is whether we feel it fits in as a conditional use under rural residential. And based on the discussion, um, I guess what I'm, at, I'm looking for here is anyone wants to make a motion um, to approve this application as a conditional use under Article 4D three conditional uses, G, public and quasi-public recreational buildings and facilities. What does that mean? <laughs> 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 I keep hearing that. Yeah. Can, I, can I have a really good clarification as to what that means? Uh, well, I guess there's no legal definition. Um, what that means to me, that this is a facility being used for partial public recreational activities. So anybody can go there? Well, I, it, no, I mean that's... No, it'd be private. It would be, that is private. It's a private. That's what's confusing is that me correct? with public. It's, pri it's private though. This is private invitation only. Yeah. So it's not really public. So there's no that's definition of quasi. So you might have noticed that there's a, um, no definition for this at all. Yeah. But you should, there, there is in the permitted uses, interestingly enough, just public buildings and facilities. Yes. So there is clearly something that the That's town cool. fathers and mothers decided was different. Okay. Right, was between public and quasi-public, or they wouldn't have inserted that word. That's another uh, tenet of interpretation, is you're supposed cool. to read words as if they were in there for a reason. So it's partially public. So there's something that was intended by the drafters of this ordinance and adopted by town meeting, that there was a quasi-public type of and again, this is recreation, so that's the other thing that makes it a little bit, you have to determine if this is a recreation facility. Um, uh, what I was just double checking is I know that that overall term wasn't defined, but I'm just making sure there's no definition of recreation in here before you go too far, but I don't think there is. I mean, rec recreation. Here we go. No, unfortunately. Because I'll admit, I, I kind of, when I read that before we came in here, to me that meant it was open to the public, and quasi-public would mean it's open to the public at maybe limited amounts of time for recreational activities, like a hall that the public can come to and use. Okay. But that church. Church meeting building. Yep. Well, maybe we should... Make a motion and go from there. Yeah, yeah we've got to establish this first, though. Because mm -hmm. we'll know what to vote for in relationship to what the definition is. Any other last words of wisdom? For no, I would just say there, there is a definition of public places. So to give you a sense of what just pure public would mean. Mm -hmm. It isn't a little bit different. It's called public places. The public places are public parks, playgrounds, trails, paths, other recreational areas, other public open spaces, scenic and historic sites, schools, and other public buildings and structures. So it intends, in my reading of that, that means sort of publicly owned mm -hmm. is what I would read that to, you know, in terms of um, the way that it's, um, or at least open to the public, fully open to the public, even if it's like a private park, but it's open to everybody. So uh, quasi but, is but partial of that. Partial. 
yeah, I, I guess is what I'd read. It's but plain meaning of that, but that's like not de defined. But it would have to be owned by a municipality or something. That kind of public. Uh, just pure public, yes, for yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. And that's what I, you know, under the permitted use is public buildings and facilities mm -hmm. is usually intended um, to mean the better way to say it is municipal or state, or state, federal, or municipal, yeah. but no. that's generally what that means okay. when you see that kind of use. So of in it. this case, it wouldn't apply. Under just the pure public buildings and facilities. So then the question is, is, is a quasi public, what is a quasi But this isn't, this is totally private. This land is totally private mm -hmm. on which they want to have a business. Right. Go ahead. So, so how does that work then? Like, I was just thinking, because you're talking about quasi, but like Bob Payne down the road has the Christmas tree farm. So like for three or four weekends out of the year, he has business coming in for two or three days mm -hmm. or all week, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have... You have maple syrup Sunday. You know, you have the other people that sell maple syrup from their house, and they also do Christmas tree, and they do all that other stuff. Um, I don't know. I was just trying to figure out, as you're tagging quasi, now you're calling us private, but it is. It's going to be limited with a conditional use that we are only open to host a function, you know, up to wh whatever number we choose, um, times a year, seasonally, um, for X amount of hours. Um, in a day, so. Well, I think I think you're pointing out exactly our dilemma because the, the other businesses you mentioned are open to the public, mm -hmm. whereas this is a private. This will be private functions where yeah. it's only invite that's only. That's our dilemma. Right. That's our dilemma. And it, like I said, we're looking. That's why I, I'm but sorry. This is so painful. Public, but we just like there's the public makes the decision. I don't know. I don't know how you want to figure it out, but it is the public that we would be opening it up to because right now we can have functions for mm -hmm. private, but we would like to quasi open it to the public on a conditional it's, use. It's private, it's invite only. So, so. I'm not inviting them though. But the, it, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's okay. The thing is you're not a restaurant. In other words, no. if you were a restaurant that the public could come into at any time they wished. Right. Anyone then, in the public. Yeah. Right. Then it would be more like the Christmas tree farm. Mm -hmm. Whereas mm -hmm. you are holding this gathering mm -hmm. for some private party, which makes it different. And I don't know where we're at. <laughs> okay, I think I think um, one last comment, if you wish, and then I think you gotta. I thought you had closed. Are we still open to more comments here? No, we're not. I'm sorry, folks. I apologize. Yeah, we just we wanted to make sure we heard every last bit. And if you yeah. would like the opportunity yeah. to speak one last time, we've allowed them. I'll allow you to as well. Well, I'm, I'm just please step up. Yeah, I'm just concerned with you've gone right to the conditional use, and once again, you have not addressed whether it coordinates with the comprehensive plan. And and so I'm I'm a little confused about your discussion we, about that and, no, thank and the you. examples that they gave are agricultural. Probably we would put under agricultural use, we, not yeah. a private commercial use. Yeah, let me just explain, and Phil, correct me if I'm wrong. What I understood was, thank you very much, because you did bring up the comprehensive plan, that that is not the legal document, the laws that we have to uh, follow. It's a, it's a comprehensive plan that was written that the town has to do. But there yet, is state but law yet, that says hang on they must hang be on in Hang on one second. But yet we... It's a guideline for us, but what we have to follow is what the residents of the town of Raymond have approved and passed, which is in our ordinances. Is that correct? Yes. So but you have to deter your first determination is is uh, you look to your ordinance. Yeah. So your ordinance, you say, or is it one of the permitted uses or, or one of the conditional uses? If um, you wouldn't do the analysis, for example, if it's a, a one family dwelling, that's a permitted use. You wouldn't do the analysis sitting here as a zoning board and say, is that, is that consistent with the comprehensive plan? Because the voters already determined that it was by passing that ordinance. Now, in this case, um, you will look at the comprehensive plan if you get beyond finding that it fits one of these uses because the conditional use standards require you to find 
in fact, that it wouldn't depart from the general purpose and intent of the comprehensive plan. Right. But we your first step to is to see if you even first, have a use right. here that, that it fits within. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Appreciate that. Okay. Entertain a motion? Or I'll make one if no one wants to. make one. I'm not sure how to word it. Um, I'd like a, to make a motion that... that the application of Todd Roma and Jessica Dobson be denied as a conditional use um, due to the inability to find a conditional use or permitted use under Article 4D Rural Residential District RR that is fitting for the type of business that will be um, run at the residence. I'll second that. All those in favor? All those opposed? Okay. Can I make a statement? Absolutely. Because we have run into this, it seems to me the next move, possibly for you folks, is to see if the town will expand on our ordinances to include something like that. All ordinances are voted on by the entire well, the town meeting, which is this second Tuesday, first, second Tuesday in June. So you would have time to prepare an ordinance possibility to go to town meeting next year, which would create the ordinance that you need to be able to do your business. Not, I'm not saying it'll happen, but that would be the next move, I would think. Scott, would that be right? Yes, they could. Well, yeah, they could petition the selectmen to look into the ordinance yeah. now. Um, then the planning board would look at how to create that ordinance, and then they would throw it back to the selectmen to see if they approve of it, and then it would go for a town vote. Yeah, you'd have to get going on it right now, though, to get it ready for next June. And you've done a lot of work on this, so um, I think it would be a, a good step for you guys if you want to proceed with this. Because it would help our ordinance as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, we originally talked to Scott and Jim about was the ordinance, and he thought this was the better to take. Well, so. and, it, yeah. and it may be because we may have to create a whole new ordinance to, to take care of this situation. Mm -hmm. so but I, we, we expect that there will be more people with facilities, you know, with, with the land that are going to be asking the same thing. We're, it, we're surprised and that's exactly more. why having an ordinance in here would be the absolute best way to go to cover all that. Yeah, exactly. Get it under conditional uses. But I thank you all very, very much yeah. for all the work everyone did on this. Appreciate it. Thank you. So don't give up. Okay, we have, next we have signing of the findings of that. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Mike, appreciate it. Thanks. Bill, thank you for your explanation. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Hey, are you still with us there? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> Right. So we have the, I think we start with Robert and Gail Volpe application. And we had the findings of fact. And we had some good comments. Come back in. I think, um, Louise, can I just run through the ones you passed along to us? Sure. Okay. Um, on the Volpe appeal, maybe using approved absence. For Patricia's, for example, non-attendance might indicate that her absence was known and approved before the meeting. So let's start with that one. And no, it's a very good question. And I think what I would, um, my comment would be, we actually don't pr approve or disapprove um, of people's attendance. We request notification or non-notification. So I might suggest that we put notified 
Um, and I think it's in our bylaws. When someone um, doesn't attend, for right. example, on that one, you weren't here, and I put known absence, because no. we knew you were right, coming. Right. And Louise is just questioning um, the appropriate term. Should it be approved? And I guess, Mary, I'm tossing back to you. We don't approve someone coming or not. We just need to be notified. Mm -hmm. So would you be comfortable with notified or non -notified? Yeah, the only thing that I added I guess was the written statement. Yeah, we still we need to add that to we have a couple things to add possibly to our next meeting because we have to we have to talk about that and yeah. and add that in whether it's necessary or not. I don't know. Yeah, there's a um, we found a statement that someone can write if they're not in attendance at a meeting. Oh, it, it just makes it kind of official. Yeah, official it's some, but it's something why you're not there or that you're not going. That to you're be not. There. That right. you're yeah. just yeah. not. Yeah. They're not there. put it in writing as an email. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but that's something that we need to like put at the next meeting to discuss, right? To approve it, to, to if we're going to incorporate that, because at some point, I thought well, we would already in our bio. That I'm just just so I clarify, it's not yeah. in the bylaws that they have to notify. Is that if I'm understanding that correctly? Hang on. Is it a cookie cutter letter or a note? No, or it's just a um, statement. I can't even see what it was. On. Just attaching <laughs> an email. It's been, to it's been too long. <laughs> Hang long. on, I think. Um, here, because I mean, the email could go with it. Uh, board member's affidavit regarding missed meeting. Um. Was it say just says they have to? Is it, um, is it I'm a member of the board of appeals in the town. Now the board is in the process of hearing and deciding an application. That's if you're coming, but to. Um, you're seeking approval on blank date. I was unable to attend the board meeting at which this application was discussed. Since that meeting, I've done the following work so I can familiarize myself so I can vote on it. So it's basically saying, oh, that's, that's indicating I would want to take part right. in any votes going forward. The way boards have done it in the past is if you weren't there, you didn't do anything with right. regards to the subject yeah. matter. But we may need it for a quorum. Let's say I met, I think what brought that up was I had missed the site walk. But because I had missed the site walk, could I vote on the? The site walk, you're not required yeah, to attend that to vote. I do know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I think, so I think being at, a meeting, at yeah. the meeting and being part of all of the public discussions and all of the, you know, the meeting interactions and the, the board interactions, having missed that and then being part of a vote wasn't something we did. Yeah, they don't do that with the planning board. If you are right. not, there, you're not there. You're meeting. You don't vote. You're yeah. not part of it. You're not. You could be privy to it if you watch the video, but right. you weren't part of it. So, right. this chart just talks about you know you're a member in good standing. You're all you're required to attend the meetings. If you miss absence from more than two consecutive meetings without notification, they do stick to that term. Mm -hmm. It's cause for disciplinary action. Um, are we missing people all of a sudden? Like are Rick's. we short one Rick. Rick did but we call. still Rick have them, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, no, we're full. Oh, we're, we're full. Okay, okay, good. Yeah, okay. We got a full just making sure yeah. I didn't miss anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just Rick had um, a medical issue come up um, at the last minute. So no, it, okay. it only refers to that you need to notify. Yeah, so. Fine. Fine, so we go with um, change known absence to notified absence. Is everyone good with that? I don't Can I vote on that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, because this is our rule. Can, well, I, mean, I know. It's, it's, not, it's not an order. We weren't here. Right. Yeah. This will be going for it. Actually, I mean, this is technically probably if something we would decide. It's really in this finding of But that. I think the so. whole just attaching the email notification should be good because this yeah. whole thing is you want to take part in the vote, voting process. So as far as, thank you, to bring me back to where I should be here, as far as this, um, these two findings of fact, we can change that to notified absence, Mary. Okay. Under who's absent. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, 
Should my meeting, uh, visiting, oh, should my visit to the site prior to the meeting alone be noted? Yes, I agree with that, and that's why I put it in this one tonight. Um, so, and on this finding of fact, I think under background, Mary, where we talk about a site walk right at the end of that paragraph took place, we just put a line that says Louise Lester visited the site on her own time alone. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I thought we weren't allowed to do that. You, you can drive by it. You can't get on the property. You can't you get can on the property, but you can drive by it. Yes. Yep. Basically, you don't interact with anybody. Right. Right. Type of thing. But just to see where it is. Yep. Um. <clears throat> and you wondered whether the vote should have our names attached. Should there be a vote? Which was um, if there's a vote that's not unanimous. And yeah, the, um, if we have a roll call vote taken, we can have all the names put in. I think what I found generally though was unless it's, to your point, if it's not unanimous, then we could put the names in. Mm -hmm. So these were all unanimous, I think, on both of these. So in the future, I'm happy to do that. For this one, for tonight, for example, we would put sure. in. Yeah. So we don't have to make any change there, Mary. Yeah. That would be just in the future because they were all unanimous votes. Um, so that's that. I think we're all set for that one. So the other one was the Garish. Yeah, and that was unanimous for. Yeah, votes on that were unanimous. And I think same thing we could put. Um, uh, absent, Patricia was absent. We can put notified absence at the top. On that one, um, we can also add Louise Lester visited the site on her own time alone. Because we did those the same day. Right? That's what I recall. Yeah. Yep. And I think Eric, we have to check with Eric, but I think he also. Okay. I think he drove by. Did he? Yeah, because he doesn't, I think his site, our site visits don't work well with his. He works that's schedule. right, he works on them. So you'll check that, Mary? Is that okay? Um, or you want me to check with him? I'll, I'll check with him. Okay. We'll check on Eric. And then it was just a um, good uh, comment here. Um, on number 10, to replace fire rescue with fire department. I think the fire inspector is under the fire department rather than just fire rescue. You have a comment on that? <laughs> yeah, it's actually the fire rescue department. So. I was going to say Raymond Fire Rescue Department, I think, was, what is what was on the official letter. Yeah. So okay. would we be okay with that? Yep. Okay, so... On number 10 on that, Mary, it would be Raymond Fire Rescue Department on the number 10 on the findings of the okay. 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 Yeah, 10 would be the will not overburden police, fire, rescue services, etc. And it's in the under the comments I had fire rescue, and that's where it would be Raymond Fire Rescue Department. Okay. And if you have a question, you can give me a shout too on that. There's also under conditions at the end of it, that should be Fire Rescue Department. You got that? Working on it, working on it. I know, sorry. Okay. Yeah, the, this, um, the second condition. It's the last page on that one. The second condition. It says Raymond Fire Department. Okay. It would be Raymond Fire Rescue Department. Gotcha. Do we have to make a motion to approve both of these? You can do it all in one lump if you wanted to, yeah. or do it individually. Just so long as it's we want to make a motion. Make a motion to approve in one lot. Volpe <laughs> and Chick Garish. Findings of fact. All those in favor? 
All those opposed, one abstain. Yeah. <laughs> We're keeping you out of it. You stay out of it. We're not letting you vote. Notifying a no vote. Right. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, Mary, my only other comment was to the point about the affidavit for a missed meeting and we have bylaws. We haven't gone over these things in years. That no. The next time we have a meeting, if we could put it maybe on the end of the agenda. Okay. For the workshop. Yeah, which uh, however way we're supposed to deal with it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. We could do it as a workshop. I just don't know how those, whether or not we do it ahead of, well, usually it's ahead of time or yeah. after. I just hate to call it a meeting if we don't have to have one, you know what I mean? So. Well, we have one next month anyway. Oh. I'll say that'll okay. come up next. Okay, okay. okay. so okay. We, what adjourn and then go into the workshop? Well, well usually you would oh, have it ahead of time. Usually you would have it ahead of time at a different the workshop. And okay. then, well, no, the day of the meeting. Oh. You would go be there a little earlier. You'd oh. have the workshop and then you'd go from there right to the meeting. That's what, um, like, oh, okay. selectmen do something similar to that. So, can we do something like that? Why not? I'm, I'm, How early do I have to yeah. feed my horses? <laughs> I think as long as everybody can make it a particular yeah. time, you're we'll, good. I mean, we'll check into that and see if that's okay. an okay procedure for us to do. I don't exactly. think we need a lot of time. Half hour? I wouldn't think. No, yeah. probably not. It just all it is is just to yeah. refresh everybody of those, is right. basically. Right. That's all, yeah, to walk through and we'll make sure everyone's aware. Yeah. And I just want to double check, because we asked this a while back. I'm sorry to keep folks, because I don't want to be here any longer either. Um, of when it is we have to... Uh, Relook at everyone's position and the dates and whether they're continuing and whatnot. I, I think Louise mentioned at one point if the, the town has a year end that's different than a calendar year, right. but it's something I read, I think, of the bylaws said the beginning of every year that you're supposed to look at the positions on the board and stuff. So I'm kind well, of that confused. That would be before town meeting, I would think. Are you talking about voting for that? Yeah, changing those things around, or if somebody says I want to be done, you know, at the end of my year or whatever. Well, the selectmen do appointments. I'm assuming still the end of June after yeah, town meeting. Right? But there's also the officers, election of officers, is something that's okay. Internal. So appointments would follow. Be around the first of July, I would think. Yeah. Well, yeah, and um, the various the terms. Um, expire a different date on different right. years. So we would so at that time we would just look at the chart. ones expiring to see if they want to continue. Yeah, I can get I can get everybody a copy of that chart that we have. Okay. Great. Yeah, we so then it, leaving it once. Yeah, I know. I don't think we I think we're all over the place. So then it, we don't have to worry about um, unless these guys vote me off the island <laughs> and vote Len off the island too. <laughs> we don't have to worry about the chair and vice chair and all that till the beginning of the year. Um, I'll have to see where what it says in the. It might be in, these in the bylaws. Yeah. 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 When you would well, vote. I know that it says instance, a year. Planning, planning board is June, but mm. you can push that yeah, off. But I, I don't know what it says. In, in my experience, it's always been July first. Everything. Oh, it says the ZBA shall annually elect from their membership a chairperson to preside at all meetings. This election will take place at the first regularly scheduled meeting of the year. Okay, that's the fiscal year. I fiscal, would make the assumption so. They probably do that because they don't meet all the time. Right. Yeah, yeah you guys aren't supposed to meet as often as you have Right. To, by the way. <laughs> that was, that's what that's we what were told. That's what they told me when yeah. I got here. <laughs> so we are going with calendar year on that? Uh, no. 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 Fiscal, yeah, fiscal, fiscal year. Fiscal year. Fiscal year. July 1st. Yep. So we should have done that. Well, Didn't we do that yeah, with I you? We, yeah, I thought we did that. Or did right. that? Well, yeah, we did with me because I'm d I was the new guy. Yeah. And yeah, but I came in for one term. I think we voted you two in. I'd have to go back and look at the... Yeah, okay. I didn't, it wasn't that long ago. No, it wasn't, when, but I kept. I didn't know it if it was Larry because was, of someone, it was because of Larry stepping down. Right. There was a was, reason we kept. Right. Yeah, I'm, so was that okay to cover I, I, us? I'm just one year at this point. Yeah. 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 So, so we'll, I think we're good. We'll check, but I think, okay. I, know what you, I know what you mean. Okay. Even though you stepped in, does it still mean you have to do it again? Right, anyway right away. Right. Yeah. I yeah. just wanted to make sure we follow yeah. the protocol, so tell us if we need to Yeah. do something. Okay. Um... Code Enforcement Officer Communications. So, we have another uh, Boarding Appeals. Um, this one isn't too bad. It is going to be on a garage and it is a setback variance only. Okay. okay. So, it, it's, like I said, we can do the site visit if you wanted to. Um, that's up to, it's definitely your board's call. 
Um, I always do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I do too. Yeah. Yeah, and I told him if they do that, you know, I said just make sure you have it marked out so they can tell what's going on. And he might or might not be there. He runs a he runs a business, so so the site walk would be, would be August seventeenth. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the only one we have. So okay, and that's commercial or uh, residential. Residential. It is. Um, where is he? It is off of Swan Road. Non the non lakeside the swan. Is it more than a fifty foot lot? There it is, I believe. Not a whole lot. There's an existing house down there, but it is mm -hmm. it is a part well no, it is a it is a hundred foot. Oh, big one. Yeah, big one. <laughs> Lots of merged two lots. Yeah. Probably. For sure. That was a swan development, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm getting to know those. But that's the only thing we have coming down the pipe right at this current moment. Okay. Any other comments? No. Anyone like to make a motion? Make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> All those in favor? Second. Second. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Thank you.